Um, I seek your guidance on something that I raised yesterday in relation to the business motion. Uh, concerning my very grave concern, I think shared by many, many people throughout the country, uh, let alone in this House, about the idea of a bill effectively being rammed through in one day of such importance as this one, which is entitled The Bill to Make Provision in Connection with the Period for Negotiations for Withdrawing from the European Union. Uh, in short, uh, Mr Speaker, this is a reprehensible procedure in the context of this vitally important issue of our leaving the European Union. It is unconstitutional. It is, uh, it is inconceivable that we should be presented with a bill which can be rammed through in one day. And I want to make that as a point of order and to ask you if you do have any observations on the point I've just made. Well, uh, my uh, observation is really twofold. First of all, that the Honourable Gentleman is of this view was made very clear to me by his oration yesterday. Indeed, I say in no spirit of discourtesy to the honourable gentleman that I rather imagine anybody within a 50-mile radius of this place would be aware of the honourable gentleman's views on this important matter, uh, given the force and frequency with which he has expressed them. Uh, secondly, however, the House voted yesterday to give precedence tomorrow to a business of the House motion which has not yet been tabled, so we await that. And thirdly, I would just say that although this is, of course, an unusual state of affairs, it is not unknown for a bill to be pushed through the House in one day. For a bill to be brought forward by a backbench member is very unusual, but it is consequent upon a decision of the House. Bills being brought forward and taken through their various stages in one day in government time are not particularly unusual at all. Uh, for example, Northern Ireland legislation has often been taken through the House on that basis. Now, I know that the Honourable Gentleman wouldn't object to that in the way that he objects to this, but I don't think it's as unprecedented as he supposes. It is unusual, and it is a bit different from those other examples, and it grates immensely with the Honourable Gentleman, but that doesn't of itself render it disorderly. Upsetting the Honourable Gentleman is displeasing, but not disorderly.